I'd like to welcome Anya Khan, an inspiring 10-year-old who's the new and youngest member on our Girls in Science for SCG's platform from the U.S. to share her vision. Good morning. <clears throat> Good morning. My name is Anya Denise, and I would like to talk about STEM education in the era of artificial intelligence. Today is International Day of Girls and Women in Science and Technology. Today, there are still t-shirts and bags at shops that say, girls can do anything. When I see those messages, I think to myself, isn't that obvious? Of course girls can do anything. It's such a clear truth. Why aren't there t-shirts that say, boys can do anything? I hope in my lifetime, there will be no need for such things as girls' days and anything. It will just be science and technology day for all. We read stories about Cinderella's getting rescued by princes and becoming princesses all the time. I never wanted to be a princess who is rescued. A princess who is my role model is Her Royal Highness, Princess Nisreen. <laughs> a scientist and a girls in science advocate whose work puts her in a class even higher than her regal title. I thank you, Princess Nisreen, for giving me this opportunity to share my perspective. I hope to follow in your footsteps. Thank you for this day and our, for your dedication to our future, my future. Thank you. Today, I proudly stand before you because some incredible woman in history paved the road for me. They already approved those t-shirts of girls can do anything long ago. Marie Curie won not one but two Nobel Prizes physics and chemistry, but only three women have won physics Nobel Prize in all of history. Of 211 physics Nobel Prize winners, only three were women. The reason we celebrate this day is to make sure that it becomes not a story about exceptional women, but a norm that girls belong and succeed in science and technology. I was born in Silicon Valley and have grown up with a love for science and innovation. STEM education is not an exception, but normal. I build robots and write code to program them as I think about my future. I know I will not just be competing with other girls and boys, but also artificial intelligence. It is easy to code a set of commands that are triggered in particular scenarios. That's normal programming and automation. Artificial intelligence and machine learning are different. Humans are dynamic. We can behave in infinitely more ways to any given situation based on knowledge, past history, instinct, and intuition. Computers can now behave almost like humans. If you give them a set of rules, historical data, and the method to choose the right decision, computers can make very good and sometimes even better choices than us. I do worry about girls in science and technology, but even more about humans and artificial intelligence. I think a lot about the difference between my intelligence and artificial intelligence. I have feelings, machines don't. If someone punches me, I get mad. If someone punches a machine, it can also get mad because it knows the rules of behavior. If you get punched, you're supposed to get mad. It can behave angry, but it does not feel anger. When preparing my speech, I researched and read about many scientists and how they made their discoveries. They found their answers not just by analyzing data. They sometimes had a gut feeling, faith, or intuition. I was going to give a speech about our bleak and scary future, with AI taking our jobs and beating us at everything. But then I was so happy that I have feelings, empathy, and imagination, which machines don't have. I look around this room, and I see girls and boys who care about me. All of us in this room have empathy. We care about each other and children all over the world. AI may think it's illogical to think we can change the world, but courage, love, and empathy are powerful. As long as we have them, speed, data, and AI cannot replace us. It can only help us. Have you seen the videos of the Boston Dynamics robot dogs? They react just like real dogs. But when the man kicks one of the dogs to show how good the dog's reflexes are, it makes me upset. Just because the dog does not have feelings, there's no reason to mistreat it. In a world where my colleagues might be machines, I think we should be kind to them too. If we learn to mistreat AI, which is so much like us, our habits can easily trickle to treating humans that way too. We need to be mindful of our values in the age of AI. 
God told us to treat other creations kindly. AI is our creation, and now we have that godly responsibility to put good purpose in them. My feelings may seem ridiculous to you, but in my generation, this is natural. When AI can drive cars, answer calls, manage office work, and so many things that take our time, I'm quite sure we will come up with bigger and better questions to ponder, with great help from my friend AI. We must have strong STEM education to know how to live in a world with AI so we can coexist. As I say all this, I am slightly ashamed. I live in a different world on the same earth. There are girls struggling to prove that they deserve to go to school. They are still trying to prove that they are equal in their ability. With great privilege comes great responsibility. We must take action, not deliberation. We must invest in women and girls in science to give more role models to girls. I want to see more than three out of 211 physics Nobels in the hands of women. I want to see at least 50% of science and technology companies to be led by women. You can bring change bottom up, but you can also bring change top down. This is the top of the world. It is United Nations. You pave the roads for justice and equality. Now let's not leave those roads empty and support every single girl and woman who takes the challenge to walk that road. Invest in girls and women in science. Thank you.